record this matter is before the court and the plaintiff's motion for to show cause. Defendant's motion for to show cause. Defendant's motion modify parenting time and other relief. Uh, this hearing is being conducted via Zoom. I'm present as attorney Leah Worker representing the plaintiff, Jennifer Jukri. Mr. Jukri appears to be present. In addition, defendant father Anthony Jukri is also present. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Your Honor. And Morning, Your Honor. have conferred with Mr. Brad. Good morning, Mr. Brad, uh, who has provided the court a fine recommendation. Um, that parenting time shall be as follows. Father uh, may have parenting time in Michigan, uh, giving mother seven days notice when he will be in Michigan. And that parenting and uh, I'm pre presumably that's reasonable liberal parenting time. <coughs> Excuse me, when he's in Michigan. In addition, father should have a reasonable liberal phone contact with the minor child of the parties, as long as it's appropriate. Further, that there should be no discussion of these court proceedings with the minor child. I know it's been alleged that the defendant father has shared app close communications to the 14-year-old child, and the courts only hope that is not true, because if so, that's a basis for contempt. Um, further, it's recommended that defendant shall receive the air compressor. The defendant shall put a third party in place to receive the compressor. And all communication between parties shall be only on app flows, only regarding the minor child. Finally, Ms. Work is requesting attorney fees. Uh, that is a recommendation. Um, Ms. Work, is this recommendation made with your client this morning? Um, the it is, Your Honor. Um, however, we are still requesting that Mr. Jukri provide a substance abuse evaluation, the full evaluation, um, in accordance with this court's three previous orders to that effect, um, as he's not done so. Um, we also had um, filed a show cause on February 1st, as he's continued to communicate with the child about this case. Um, the copy of that should be in the court's file. Um, we included um, the text message screenshots uh, when Mr. Jukri filed his motion regarding parenting time. Um, he sent text messages to the child about um, that filing. He went so far as to take a photograph of outside of the court's chambers on the fourth floor of the courthouse and sent that photograph in a text message to the child with the text, I'm working on seeing you. Um, Mr. Jukri has continually disregarded this court's orders when it comes to communication about the case and about my client um, and the disparaging remarks. Um, they've been ongoing. He's admitted that before this court. We filed our show cause on November 22nd, I believe it was for the same issue when he sent screenshots of the app close communications to the child. Um, the issue or the request for attorney's fees um, that was heard, I believe it was on December the 5th. Um, the court reserved our request for attorney's fees. We're renewing that request for that. Um, show cause and also requesting fees for this one. Um, Mr. Jukri just continues to show a complete and utter disregard um, for this court and its orders um, and has been incredibly defensive with statements along the lines of he's going to communicate with his daughter about whatever he wants to communicate with her about. And it's inappropriate. All right, thank you. Mr. Jukri used to res reside in the state of Florida. Um I'm sorry, one second, Your Honor. I have trouble hearing you. Can you say that again? Do you still reside in the state of Florida? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So so I initially filed a show cause for today. And Jennifer added on to it. So this is the issue. And I submitted all of this to the court. I don't know if you saw it. My main problem has been since June, I was hospitalized. Jennifer told you the court that it was because of a methamphetamine overdose and that i told her on the phone call that i use meth and my parental rights were taken away so now i submitted to you today all of my hospital records with my diagnoses which show there is no drug use it actually says the opposite in there and shows that i had a methicillin resistance of mrsa blood infection and sepsis everything that i said was true and i submitted those records to the court so I am asking that she be held accountable for that. 
And as far as, yes, I probably shouldn't have sent a picture of my daughter from court, but I was not discussing specific court topics with my daughter. All I was letting her know is that I'm doing what I need to do to see you because for the last six months, all she's been told is that I'm a meth addict and it's destroyed our relationship. Yes, I have a history of substance abuse. Is it present? No. Is it something I will struggle with the rest of my life? Yes. But I've, and yes, I've been homeless for the last two months. I found a job. I worked myself out of that. I have a vehicle now. I am back in my union job, making good money. Within four or five weeks, I'll have my own place again. I'm doing everything that I need to do. But the other issue is that in August, Jennifer did not respond to me. So in August, we you gave us an order for me to get my stuff out of Michigan by September 1st. I went on app calls. I was messaging Jennifer, but there was also the issue of me doing the first drug assessment. I guess I should backtrack and go there. So yes, I did do another drug assessment and I did do the urinalysis and that was all negative. So I spoke with the legal team at the Freedom Center. Okay. So they are assuring me that they are giving the court exactly what you guys need. There is nothing else. That is the drug assessment. That is the valuation of the DSM-5, whatever you call it. But I mean, I don't know what else to give you. But they are accredited. They are licensed. It is legitimate. And I've done it twice now. And it's that what they give you is not going to change no matter what treatment center I go to. It's going to be the same letter. They're going to say, okay, he passed the drug test. He's telling us he's not an active drug use. I think Miss Rucka and Jennifer want to see me put an inpatient somewhere or want me to go do an inpatient treatment center. It's just not. It's not feasible and it's not it's not what they recommend. But Miss Rucka and Jennifer have a problem with that of their recommendation more than anything. <laughs> but um, the fact is I've done it twice now and I've done the urinalysis and it came back negative. That being said, I was supposed to get my, my daughter at the end of the summer and I was supposed to get my belongings at the end of the summer. Okay. So I reached out to Jennifer on Apples. She did not respond to me for 10 days about me coming to Michigan and getting my belongings. But that also happened at the same time with Reese. And then Miss Ricker saying that my first drug assessment was illegitimate or whatever. They didn't accept it because I did it too fast. Okay, whatever. I understand that. That happened. But at that point, I had to hire an attorney. My attorney advised me to stop talking to Jennifer about getting my belongings and stop talking about Reese. But the thing is, is from when that happened in August, we didn't go to court until November. And Jennifer and Ms. Rook have stated today in front of the magistrate that as of November 10th, Jennifer still had all my belongings from the house. But somehow between November 10th and December 5th, from the last time that we talked, all that's gone missing. Jennifer brought my, my belongings to U-Haul, but she only brought one bed, or not a bed, a futon, and four or five boxes of the garbage and a dresser. Mr. 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 Jokery, so I, I paid this money for you when hold I'm on. homeless. Mr. Jokery, and I, and I, hold on. Mr. Jokery, oh, sorry. hold on. I, yeah. You just can't go on and on and on and on. Is there still a dispute as to personal property, Ms. Rucka? Um, there, there is. I know that was an um, issue raised in the pleadings, but the recommendation is not addressed that. Is there still, are the parties still arguing over the personal property other than the compressor? Um, we did file a response to the show cause, um, explaining um, all of the attempts my client made. Is there um, still an issue? Is there still an issue? My client. I I've read the pleadings. Right. So my client will return the air compressor. She has no problem. As far as anything else, she doesn't have in her possession any of the uh, tools and things like that. Um, she stored what she could after she moved. The initial agreement in August regarding the furniture was made because there were multiple pieces of furniture um, because he didn't come and get make the arrangements to get his stuff for months. She couldn't store and couldn't leave that stuff. So she, okay. does, she no longer has that extra furniture. She stored the right. things she was able to store. She's returned. Right. Do you understand that, Mr. Joe Cree? Do you understand that? I've, uh, you've got, you received all copies of pleadings by Ms. J Ms. Rurka. You, you didn't timely pick them up until it's all gone. Other than the compressor, I couldn't so, timely pick them up because she wasn't responding to me on app clothes effectively when I could have came and got them. All the motion. All right. So the courts of the opinion that once this compressor uh, has been uh, addressed, that there's no other issue as to any of the personal property. So there's no sense. There's a lot of the personal property, Mr. Jukri. So uh, 
who's the third party? Let's get this compressor in the hands of a third party so that we don't keep arguing about this. The court can't I have don't care Mr. about Mr. the compressor. What I care month. about is the $8,500 worth of other stuff I didn't get. Okay. Let's agree upon a third party. Who is going to get, who is Mr. Cooper going to give the compressor to? I do not care about the compressor. All right. Okay. Um, I care about miss, the other miss, furniture. Okay, Plank, Honor, you let, hold on. When we were, hold on. Let's sorry. eliminate any reference to the compressor. Sure. So um, again, um, uh, well, actually, we should probably reference that the the defendant uh, um, has, has no longer re requests the compressor. So Mr. Drucker, you can do whatever you want with that. Is that correct, then, Mr. Drucker? If I'm understanding you correctly, correct. All right. So okay. So we have no issues with personal property. So let's, no. uh, let's talk about the app close, so Mr. Jukri, I don't know what would motivate you to send a picture of the, 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 the courtroom door to your daughter. What is that about? I mean, that's that sounds like somebody that is having some uh, some mental health issues. I just wanted my daughter to know that I was doing what I needed to do to see her. No, just showing no, her Mr. Jukri, because Jennifer is telling a, her that a I'm a, child, she's a minor. You don't tell her about these corpse scenes at all. That is okay. inappropriate, clearly inappropriate. And with respect to your substance abuse assessment, yeah, one time the court ordered you did the uh, the 14 panel hair follicle test. That was back in October. I've never seen that. You and overturned then, course, that. You said I didn't need to do it. That was dated. That was like, as I recall, dated like uh, on the same day as we had the court hearing. Clearly fraudulent. So the court has never seen a valid substance abuse assessment. Mr. Pratt, I don't know if your office has received one, but this court has not received any valid documentation that, uh, that this court would believe to be a valid substance abuse uh, assessment. Your Honor, attached to his motion to modify parenting time, he does have a four page document that is from the exact same center from the August um, assessment that does have your analysis attached to it. It was included as part of his motion though, Your Honor. Um, okay. But I, I believe that there was discussion regarding that as well. Is that updated or is it, is it the same report that he submitted back in October? Your Honor, it is, dated, it is dated current, but it does note that this is the same, um, that that they are the same company that did it back in August okay. in the documentation. I mean, that's the Freedom Center, correct? I see it. That's correct, uh, Your Honor. It sounds like this was just a report after an, an interview, and it looks like it's basically the just a reprint of the letter that was dated August sixteenth to Mr. Jukery. Yes, and I've spoke to the legal team after seeing Miss Rika show cause at this treatment center, Your Honor. Whether I go to this treatment center or I go to another treatment center, they're going to give you their evaluation. And I did approve for them to release anything else that you guys want. And Ms. Ricca did not respond or did not ask for anything else. So I don't know. So I spoke to their legal team because this is the second time that I've gotten assessment at the Freedom Center. They're nationally and state accredited and licensed. And so I had a conversation with them this morning because this is going to become a bigger issue. This is what they will give you when the court requires a drug assessment evaluation for this situation, this is what they will provide. So, I mean, I don't, I don't know what else to give. All right, Miss uh, Miss Rook, what else are you seeking? Your Honor, Mr. Dukri was ordered to provide a full assessment. The letter that he provided, you are correct, is essentially a reprint with a new date on it. Um, this was addressed at length at our hearing in October, and then again in December. Um, Prior to um, this case being called, Mr. Dukery indicated that Mr. Hurley had reached out to me. I did not receive any communication from Mr. Hurley. Um, our, our position is that the, a, a letter is not a full evaluation. Um, I've been in receipt of substance abuse evaluations. Um, they go through and they list the criteria along with the responses to each. Um, all of those things. And I know that this court um, is familiar with what a full assessment typically looks like. And it's not just a one page letter summarizing that an assessment was done. Um, Mr. Jukery sent me an email. I'm sorry, he sent my paralegal an email on February 1st um, that he had notified. And he said, quote, I notified the drug treatment center where I had my assistant done assessment done. Patrick Hurley would like Rurka to call him immediately. I would recommend she does this before court today. She has his contact information. 
Your Honor, Mr. Jukery was ordered to provide the full substance abuse evaluation. Mr. Jukery has not done that. I am not Mr. Jukery's counsel. I am Ms. Jukery's counsel. I am not going to spend my client's time and money attempting to chase down what Mr. Jukery has been ordered to provide for months. For months. All right, uh, Mr. Jukery, this letter does say that you completed that uh, you completed a drug and alcohol evaluation. Uh, so have them uh, provide that evaluation. They've just given us a letter. So provide that evaluation upon which they drafted this letter. All we have is a letter. I'm just telling you what their legal team told me today, that that is what they provide. But yes, I will have them. I don't, I don't know what you want. And this was the same issue we had last time. Well, like, you, 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 what, what they can do is get, get the hair follicle test, and that'll clear up a lot of things, Mr. Problem giving you anything. Anything. So That's why I messaged Ms. Rutka and asked her to reach out to Mr. Hurley to make sure that she had exactly what she wants before right. today. Because right, but the legal team Mr. there Jukri, is telling me that they... Obligation. Mr. Jukri, it's your obligation to... You can. Uh, uh, she's got to send subpoenas. Why should Mr. Jukri spend a lot of money to do that? You can, as the patient... As the individual being uh, evaluated, you can ask them and sign a release that she authorizes them to send out information to Ms. Rorka. So I think you want to, and I don't know, as part of the evaluation, did you submit to any and type I've of testing? Sorry. You need to submit I've a already full done that. And that's why I asked Ms. Rorka to get a hold of okay. Mr. Hurley because Mr. she could have gotten anything get, she wanted. Mr. Jukri, you get a hold of Mr. Hurley. So the court. I don't know what you guys want. Okay. A full evaluation. I've been assured today by testing. a legal team of three different people at this facility that I have given this court twice exactly what you have asked for and that they would Just give this to anybody in the country. That this Mr. is what Jukri. they get. Right. All we got is a letter. All we got is a letter. And uh, yeah, I don't see any, any drug test results. Did you submit to any drug, the drug test? Is, the urinalysis is in there with the letter. I submitted that with my change for parenting time. Well, the... Uh, uh, your analysis, anyone can modify and alter your analysis. We know we need a hair follicle test. And I, that was back you in told me the last time that I did not need to do the hair follicle because I admitted to you that it, I would test positive for cocaine. So you okay. said you only wanted the year analysis. That was your order the last time. Well, okay. But when, when, when you are clear, having no, no need for any treatment or so forth, but you acknowledge using cocaine. I mean, the suggestion is still an issue. Your so, Honor, the yeah, last time we had court ago. in December, you told me you did not require the, the hair follicle because I admitted to using cocaine over two months ago, and I said it would probably show up in a, in a hair follicle. So you said because of that, you only wanted me to do a year analysis. That was your order the last time we had court in December. All right. When did you last use, Mr. Jukri? It's been months. Okay. Well, you need to prove that. I can't hear you. You just sorry. have a letter here. The court would agree this letter. That is not a letter. Itself. That is an, a, an evaluation. That is an evaluation from the drug treatment center. That is not just a letter, Your Honor. Your Honor the court I required an evaluation <laughs> with the drug treatment center's recommendations. So on there is their evaluation of the DSM-5 or whatever that's called and their recommendations. And that is exactly what it is. Well, obviously, he completed an assessment, a written assessment. They did the letter. So, Ms. Rooker, we should get a copy of that assessment. Any other documentation in your file? Your Honor, um, I, I would agree. Um, the court did indicate in December that it would not require Mr. Jukery to submit to a hair follicle test. Um, I believe the transcript um, would indicate he said on that date that, that his no use was about a month and a half ago, um, my, we believe that he's continued to use control substances um, because of his behavior um, and communication with my client over the last couple months. We would renew the request for the hair follicle ah. test. Um, if it has, in fact, been several months since Mr. Jukri has used um, cocaine or any other controlled substance, then I would expect he would have a clear hair follicle test at this point. Um, but the, the urinalysis that he provided as the court indicated, I, I mean, that, that's a snapshot in time and something that would be very easy, um, for Mr. Jukri to plan for, 
um, in order to to do that testing. So we would renew our request for or renew the request for the hair follicle test at this point. Well, Mr. Juker, you're getting the hair follicle test. That's going to put uh, put to bed some of these issues. If you don't want, if you can't get the full assessment, then the quickest thing to do is do the hair follicle test and submit those this results to the court, Ms. Worka. Your Honor, every two well, months we come to court it? and it changes. Another issue okay, is. Mr. Hold on, Mr. Jokery. Hold sorry, on. I can't that hear was you. Months ago, but again, obviously, in the court agrees, Ms. Worker, you're still, your communications, your, your, your behavior suggests you're still dealing with some issues. I'm at work right now building an aquarium in Florida. Worked myself out of homelessness in the last two months. Okay. Got a vehicle. I and I've been, done nothing but work hard. I, so right. I sent my daughter messages, let her knowing that I'm doing what I can to see her, and now I'm a bad person? No, no one's saying that. Mr. Juker, you have a health insurance, correct? Not right now. No, I don't. All right. Uh, Ms., uh, uh, is Ms. Juker willing to pay for that uh, assessment? Ms. Worka? The hair follicle test? I have no idea what it costs. It costs hundreds of dollars which I do not have. I'm still working myself out of homelessness, which is why the last time we had court in December and I told you what was going on, you agreed to the urinalysis. So, so, so here we are now. I did what the court asked me to do. I got the Ms. assessment, Ms. the evaluation, the urinalysis, yeah. and now it's not good enough. Ms. Work, is your client willing to pay for the uh, cost of the hair follicle test? Your Honor, um, she's nodding her head. I believe the answer to that is yes. Um, Ms. Jukery, you are willing to pay the cost of the hair follicle test? Yes. All right. All right. So, yeah. Mr. Jukri, we're going to put in this order that you shall submit to a hair follicle test within seven days of today's date. Mr. At Jukri, this point, I'm taking all of so this to an appeals lab. court. Okay. You can go to the appeals court. It's at yes. her cost. So, it's not, it's not coming, it's not costing you anything. Do that within seven days. That's going to put this issue to rest. And at this so point, when you go to the lab. You can have, uh, they can, if they need a payment in advance, you you uh, reach out to Ms. Uh, you, uh, on App Post, you tell Ms. Dupree who she needs to send the payment to or the credit card payment and a uh, contact phone number. And she'll make that payment so they can do that test. That should be done within seven days. Uh, the court will note that personal property division is no longer an issue and that when dad shall have any time in Michigan, when uh, uh, reasonable and liberal, when he gives mom seven days notice when he's in Michigan. And uh, the reasonable liberal phone contact, as long as it's appropriate. So I'm not doing that. I'm taking this to an appeals court. Your right, Honor. You can put that in the order, Mr. Pratt. Well, we'll know for the record, Mr. Mr. Duke refuses to submit to a hair follicle test, notwithstanding the fact that uh, the his, uh, the other party will pay for it. Uh, there's no cost nope. to Mr. Duke. Obviously, it suggests that there is an issue of substance abuse. So, I mean, again, until that's done, Mr. Uh, Jukri, the court will not uh, expand any parenting time. That's fine. So, what is, I will take this to appeals court. So, this is over. Okay. Your Honor, uh, just as a point of clarification, we would request that that hair follicle test be completed before Mr. Jukri be able to exercise any parenting time. That's fine. And that's the court's order that that be done within seven days from today's date. Not happen. I've jumped through hoops enough for all of you. This is going to appeals. Have a good day. Okay. All right. All right. That'll conclude this matter. Your Honor. We'll just note again to Ms. Rourke, you're requesting attorney fees. We'll, we'll continue to uh, address that in the future. I, I'm sorry. I got some audio interference. Your Honor, could you repeat that? The recommendation will note you're requesting attorney fees, so the court will reserve your request for attorney fees. Thank you, Your Honor. So this woman can blatantly lie and tell my kids that I'm a meth addict when I show the proof that that's complete oh. opposite about my hospitalization and there's no repercussions Ms. for Ms. that. Jukri, Ms. Jukri yeah. should not be discussing you with your daughter. You should yeah. not be discussing her with your she daughter. She came to the court yeah. and yeah. told this, and that's why my rights were taken away. She told the courts that I told her on a phone call I'm a meth addict. Your and you Honor, took my I parental mean, rights away. Your and Honor, I, I, I mean. gave you proof showing you that that is an absolute lie. And still, I have to jump through hoops. So now there's no more. We go to appeals court. Your Honor, All right, that'll conclude this matter.
Your Honor, just briefly, if I may, at every hearing, Mr. Jukery shows up and makes wild accusations against my client that she is disparaging him um, to their daughter and making inappropriate comments about his behavior. That absolutely has not happened. My client has attempted um, to encourage a child to communicate with her father. She has her own phone. Um, she has encouraged him, her to contact Mr. Jukery. Jukery is demanding that she put their daughter on the phone right now and threatening to take her back to court. If it doesn't happen within minutes, she has responded that she hasn't encouraged the child to contact him, that she's relayed the messages. She sent photographs to him from various school dances and activities. Um, he, he, every, every hearing we've had, he shows up making these wild accusations that my client is calling him a meth addict to their child, which is just not true. I have text right, from my daughter you. saying that that's exactly true. And you could talk to my daughter. And she so that's noted for the same. record. Now conclude this matter. Everything zoom out. Mr. Pratt, do you have any questions about the uh, recommend or the uh, order? Send the mail. So based off of what you stated, he doesn't I'm get to exercise any time. parenting time until the hair follicle you, test, correct? Right now, please. Okay. Just one moment, please. I'm sorry. No parenting time until he does the hair follicle test. Right? Oh, he's okay. he's going to go for it. Yeah, okay. That, that's probably fine. I don't know if he's going to come up in the next uh, few days, but uh, seven right. days. But Right. He has seven days to do the hair follicle. She's responsible for the cost. And then you wanted it noted that he refused on the record to do that. Um, yes, yeah, so we probably note that. It's probably good just to, to refresh my memory. But he can, we can still have reasonable liberal phone contact. Yep. So I lost the parenting time as is, but noted that he can't have any parenting time period until that hair follicle is completed. Correct. And All no right. discussion of the, the case with the child, the app post only. Yeah. And uh, um, go in the breakout room. Uh, again, I don't know. I guess he told you he wanted air compressor, but he told me he didn't want it. Well, because he wanted you to award um, him the, the amount for property, which was gone because it's taken eight, nine months. So. Yeah. Maybe just put a sense there and uh, no, uh, no outstanding issues regarding division of personality. Um, I have defendant is no longer requesting the air comp compressor. Personal property is not an issue. Perfect. Perfect. Okay. Thank you. All right. Let me get that I'll up work. into your queue. Yeah, and you put it, put your uh, attorney fees uh, request by workers reserved. Yeah, got that one too. She's requested in the past. All right. Thank you. She did. We reserved it the last time, Your Honor. Yeah, we'll note it again, though. Thank you. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, no, these are your, the next two are just as difficult. For the record, Josh, this is before the court for purpose of review, parenting time, as well as plaintiff's motion for to show cause, alleging that defendant mother did not transport the minor child to the Culver's restaurant. On November 26, contrary to this court's order of November 21st. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Present is attorney Marie Zagorski, representing the plaintiff father, Matthew Hobson. Mr. Hobson is present. In addition, defendant mother, Mickey Fonce, is also present. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. Parties have conferred with Mr. Walker. His recommendation is that the mo motion order to show cause date November 30th, uh, 2023, be set aside and no further action shall take place at this time. Suggest that things are going well. Ms. Skorsky, is this recommendation good with your client? Um, it, it is. It, it's, it was our suggestion. Um, Judge, I misstated in my petition and request for an order to show cause, um, I misstated the facts on that first Sunday that um, Ms. Fonson, and the child didn't come into Culver's. They sat in the car and stared at my client um, and he was inside. And then the second and third time he skipped the opportunity to go to work and get some overtime and he went to Culver's and they didn't show um, and he stopped going after that. So he's he's just um, come to the realization that um, we're going to have to let Brooklyn grow up and and reach out to him someday. Um, but Ms. Fonts treats this as a big game. She she told me that she's dropped off receipts to show that they were there every Sunday. You know, she and this kid sit in the car and they think this is fun and this is cute. And and Mr. Hobson has spent the last 18 months, 16 months, um, trying trying to fix this problem. He's thrown a lot of time and money at it. He's missed a lot of work and 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 he's ready to call it a day, unfortunately. 
Yeah, that's un unfortunate. Is the uh, is Brooklyn in counting right now, Miss Fonts? You're muted. You need to unmute yourself so we can hear you. Sorry. Uh, yes, every other week she's in counseling. Okay. And Ms. Gorski, does Mr. Opson know who the counselor is? Does he attempt to reach out to the counselor to see if, if uh, the counselor can provide him with some insight in terms of how he can uh, repair the relationship with his daughter? Um, yeah. And, and this, this court referred the issue to Ms. Scott, who recommended that he not have parenting time. You know, this is a kid who, who doesn't get out of the car. She, um, Ms. Fonts was told that she just has to get her there. She just have to make her get out. So she doesn't. And Mr. Fonts isn't going to have his parenting time through a car window. So, so there's nothing more to be done. Okay. It's unfortunate. Uh, uh to Your Honor. his parents and Ms. Fonts, you know, obviously your daughter needs to have a father in her life. So hopefully at some point in time, she can grow up and under and, and repair their relationship through some counseling. Your Honor, can I um, state too, I did drop off yesterday um, the receipts. We actually did go inside and he was never there besides the one time on November 26th. It's a lie. Well, I, can I guess it's not it. an issue. So there's no purpose served in arguing about this. It was not an issue anymore. So um, right. You know, Court at this time will adopt the recommendation that the motion board show cause date November 1st to set aside no further action is taken at this time. The court just said once again encourage you, Ms. Wants, to, uh, to, you know, to, uh, Brooklyn should, should continue in counseling. She's I've got some issues, but she won't talk with her dad. You know, in a public place at a restaurant, is buying her dinner, and she won't do that. I mean, obviously, she's got some issues. Um, not to say dad doesn't have some issues, got to work both ways, but uh, but you need his mother need to encourage that. Let her know she's safe. Dad's not going to assault her. Um, in a public place, so uh, hopefully the two of you can communicate and Brooke can reach out to her dad and they can meet someday at Culver's voluntarily without a court order. Uh, it's just, it's not healthy for this young daughter of yours. Any event, uh, anything further this morning, Mr. Gorski? No, thank you, Your Honor. All right, uh, don't give up, uh, Mr. Hobson. Hopefully she'll come around at some point in time and want her father in her life. I hope so. But, you know, continue to make sure you send her cards for her birthday and Christmas and things of that nature. Mr. Robson, don't write her off. Um, she, okay. she needs you. All right. Uh, I guess I will conclude this matter. I will adopt the recommendation. Thank you. Uh, everyone can zoom out. Have a good rest of the day. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. Okay. Court is now in session. Middle page two. Hazel Merritt versus Martin O'Neill. The record this matter is before the court for reviewing parenting time. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom. President is Attorney Alex Goman representing the plaintiff's mother, Hazel Merritt. Uh, Ms. Merritt, are you present at audio? Yes, I am. Oh, okay. She's present on audio, right on the polycom. I'm sorry. Um, and, uh, Mr. Martin O'Neill, are you present on audio? Yes. All right. Good morning, Mr. O'Neill. Uh, the parties have conferred with Mr. Morning. Patrick in front of the court this morning. Ms. Patrick has provided the court with the final recommendation. The final fellowship shall have printing time every Sunday, 6 p.m. until Friday at 4 p.m., commencing February 11th, 2024. That is the Sunday of this, this coming Sunday. The uh, parties shall exchange the minor child at the Monroe City Police Station. Uh, Make up parenting time is reserved for the defendant father, and the parties shall appear back before this court at the end of this month to review this parenting time. And that is February 27th at 2 p.m. That is the recommendation. Um, Mr. Goldman, is this a recommendation to be able to your client this morning? No, Your Honor. Okay. So uh, it seems like Ms. Merritt is being improperly penalized for taking proper medical care of her daughter. We, I understand that there's concerns about the amount of school the child has missed while in Merit, Ms. Merritt's exclusive care, but we can provide doctor's notes for all of that. I already, I, I didn't provide uh, those in advance to the court because I didn't realize we were gonna be addressing this this morning. Um, I, I just became aware of the number of absences a short while ago. Um, so I'm confident that I can provide legitimate uh, excuses for why the child missed that much time. Um, besides that, I think there's very serious allegations, which Your Honor is familiar with, that I don't think we've gotten uh, full transparency on. Um, I think the CPS report would be very probative. I haven't received that yet, despite properly uh, requesting it two weeks ago. The minor child is in therapy right now. 
Um, I'm talking with the therapist's office to get that therapist to testify about uh, what the child is revealing. Um, I realized that the scope of that testimony may, may be limited. So I, I realized that we've already adjourned this matter several times while I try and gather all the information I can for this. But I, I think we're just at a stage where the seriousness of the allegations and the importance of getting it right justify giving this more time um, so that your honor can be fully informed before rendering a decision. And this goes back to November of 2023. CPS and uh, being allegedly involved in this investigation, the court received no documentation. And uh, we can't really wait six months, a year. I mean, dad's parenting time has been suspended since November 27, 2023. Uh, and if we could recall, refresh the court's memory, Mr. Bowman, the CPS, the allegation was that the uh, Mr. O'Neill's girlfriend's 20 year old son um, uh, assaulted, actually assaulted the uh, seven year old child of the parties. Is that the allegation? That's part of it. And then there's additional physical abuse that has also occurred between defendant father's girlfriend's 13 year old son who lives in the house. So the 20 year old who is, we are alleging committed assault does not primarily reside there. He visits often. The 13 year old has also committed physical abuse and does reside there. All right. Um... And so for these reasons, I, I realize I didn't finish my request. I would just request that we continue to do what we've been doing. Um, although our, our request has always been that he can have some limited supervised parenting time. Um, I believe his conduct in these hearings is what completely restricted his parenting time, which I think raises additional concerns about that's how he's behaving in court, his ability to maintain a safe environment at home. Regardless, I think that completely flipping the parenting time schedule and restricting Miss Merritt's parenting time this much is not warranted by the circumstances. Well, the, the prior parenting time prior to November 27th, 2023, it was week on week off with parties exchange at the Dundee Police Department, correct? That's correct, Your Honor. All right. Um, Mr. O'Neill, uh, do you still live with this girlfriend? Yes, I do. We've been together okay, for 17 what? years. Okay, what about, uh, uh, you need to protect your daughter, your seven-year-old daughter, from your girlfriend's children. You understand that? Yes, sir. So, um, does a 20-year-old visit or re reside in the home? No, he barely even stopped by here. Okay. He don't well, even, we, we, like, yeah. Huh? What is, what is the 20 year old's name? Kari? How do you spell that? Okay, would you agree with Carrie Phoenix? Like I said, he president? haven't. Would, would you agree, Mr. O'Neill, like Carrie Phoenix, uh, not being the presence of your daughter? For what for what reason he barely be here? Like, I'm asking I don't, a question, Mr. I don't O'Neill. understand because all the reports are back. Mr. O'Neill, I know, I understand, but there's, there's obviously concerns that are raised. Yeah, CPS has not closed their case. Ms. Patrick, have you been receiving information that CPS has closed their case? I have not received any of that information, Your Honor. I've right. seen the police report. I've only seen what's been attached to Mr. Goldman's motion. Also, for the court's inter information, I spoke to the principal at the minor child school this morning. I called them to find out about these absences. They gave me a list of all the absences, which I can run through if the court is interested. That is the basis okay. of the recommendation. Okay. So let me ask you again, Mr. O'Neill. Obviously, there's CPS not completed their investigation. Kerry uh, Phoenix does not live in your home, correct? But he visits occasionally. The 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 investigation is over with. I got the email where she has sent me, and she okay. sent it to you. She sent she sent the copy to me, and she sent the copy to you. That's why I don't understand what Mr. Gomez said that that um. He haven't received the uh, paperwork. All right. The court has not received any reports to Mr. O'Neill. I'm not sure to talk about. Let me go back. Can you answer the court's question? Can uh, If your daughter, Alasia, in your home, can you uh, request to make sure that Carrie's not present? Yes. All right. So that might give uh, um, uh, everyone uh, peace of mind that uh, Carrie will not be present uh, during the, the time you have with your daughter, Alasia. So tell your girlfriend that he's not living there um that maybe he comes over when your daughter's not there okay he can visit his mom or his mom can go visit him this is not uh, it's not your your uh, stepchild there's allegations 
And yes, it, the court has not received any documentation that this investigation has been closed out. But if this court's going to follow the adopt this recommendation, the court wants to include a provision that Carrie shall not be um, in the presence of your seven-year-old daughter. And you're agreeable with that. You'll make sure that happens, correct? Yes. All right. Uh, again, uh, Mr. Patrick, do you know what uh, what communication that Mr. Merritt is talking, uh, Mr. O'Neill is talking about in terms of an email from someone that was closing this case? Unfortunately, no, Your Honor. I do not have a copy of that. So I would ask Mr. O'Neill to either send that to the front of the court, print it out, and drop it off to the front of the court so we could put that in the file. I do not have a copy of that. Um, and I would like to receive a copy of that. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so she's Mr. O'Neill. Yes, we're going to we're going to review this on in a couple weeks, February twenty seventh. So get that that communication to um, Ms. Patrick and she forward on to Mr. Goldman. Um, so we've we've got that. You can stop. You can okay. drop off a copy up here as well. Um, Mr. Goldman has been alleged that Ms. Merritt has changed the uh, has enrolled the child in Adrian schools. Is that accurate? No, Your Honor, and I, I think Hazel can speak to that briefly. Hazel, do you want to unmute and confirm that she's at the same school? Okay. Well, that's fine. I just want to make sure that if she's not transferred, that's what Mr. Um, uh, O'Neill is alleging that uh, mom take it upon herself to enroll in Adrian's school. She's not been going to the, well, it sounds like she goes for medical reasons, Hazel. correct, Mr. Goldman? Medical that's reasons? correct. And, and, and I actually spoke with the principal last week and confirmed that. So, um, yes, as far as I know, the child is still at that school. All right. Um, um, at this point in time, I didn't ever uh, say that she. All right, hold on, Mr. Bowman. The, uh, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the, uh, she's got to go back to school, and you're going to make sure she gets to school. Um, we can't wait six months for CPS to make a decision. Obviously, it's not that critical. CPS not moving on this matter, Mr. Bowman. So at this point in time, uh, the court understands your, your client's position. And yes, we can address some of these things further on February 27th. But at this point in time, the court's going to reinstate dad's parenting time be every Sunday at 6 p.m. to Friday at 4 p.m., commencing this Sunday, February 11th. The party shall exchange to the City Monroe Police Station. Dad, make sure she gets back to school. Um, and if she's got medical issues, I, hopefully mom will share what okay. those medical issues are with you so that you can address them. If, if she's been to prescribed medication, you should continue those prescribed medications. So, uh, Ms. Uh, Merritt, if there's prescriptions your daughter has, you need to make sure that those are turned over to Mr. O'Neill when, uh, when you exchange your daughter on Sunday. She also has That's, a surgery coming up. Okay. Did you discuss that with Mr. O'Neill? Um, I have no contact with him because of the restraining order and they just called me today while I was in court and left a voicemail for me to schedule her surgery for her right ear. Okay. What, what restraining orders are PPO in place? Mr. Goldman? Yes, you signed it. Okay. Does that prove it? You, you can't even text message or anything. It's a, for all communication. You said that we couldn't have no communication because he threatened my life in the courthouse and continues to threaten my safety. All right. Well, but obviously you should have your attorney or. Uh, the 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 doctor provided that information to dad. You two of you have joint legal custody, if the court recalls correctly. Uh, I, told the, be, I had told the I had told the doctor to let him know. Okay, when is the surgery scheduled? I have to schedule. They gave me two dates, and I have to listen to the voicemail. All right. Why don't you uh, maybe uh, write it down? Well, how how do you exchange the children if you can't have any contact? How have you been doing that? We go to we go to the Dundee Police Department. She gets out of one vehicle and gets into theirs. All right. All right, so at that time, uh, put it, give your daughter an envelope. She can give it to dad with the name of the, uh, head, the medical provider, and dad can schedule that surgery. So I'm not allowed to be at her surgery? No, you can be, well, I don't know what your no contact order says, but no, you should both be aware of that. So, but uh, if in fact the child's going to be with, uh, that surgery needs to be done within the next couple of weeks between now and February 27th, and dad will schedule that. If I can wait till so, March, we can discuss this on February 27th. Okay, so these are, for him to have her all this time, is he going to keep the other minor child away from our daughter so he's not abusing her? Well, the 13-year-old lives in the house, as I understand it, but the 20-year-old does not. So the courts can order that to Zach uh, be present. And uh, Mr. O'Neill, you, you need to be present during your parenting time. You can't be uh, off with your buddies or on vacation. I'm always you present. Your you need to protect her. So the only I'm always present. That, can I say something? No, it's not necessary. The court only restriction is that Carrie Phoenix shall not be present. So you need to tell your girlfriend that her son can't come over there while you've got um, uh, Elijah in your possession, okay? So for him to have her all this yep. time is just make up parenting time, correct? We'll discuss that on February 27th. I don't know. Uh, uh, we'll, let's let's take one step at a time. Why am I losing my Hazel? parenting time? I, I can 
If you want to mute, I can adjust that. Well, I don't know if you're losing parenting time. But again, we'll, we'll discuss this. I mean, obviously, dad's been uh, had, 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 had no contact with the child for the last two months. Um, and before that, it was week on, week off. So hopefully we can readjust things. He needs to get back to school primarily. So I, I, I'm sure this recommendation is that dad gets to school every day. And you live in Lenaway County, correct? You can so that's a long drive for you to get over to school from Lenaway County over to, to a uh, hardwood I've South. been doing it, Your Honor. I've been taking okay. her unless she was sick. Okay. That's the well, only time can... she didn't go to school is when she was sick. I well, take her every doc... single day. Hey, Miss uh, Miss Merritt, we'll get a doctor's uh, letter from the time she was sick. Okay. I already have well, those. Of course, I've seen those. Friend courts. Get those. Mr. Golan, Mr. Golan, we can find to Miss Patrick when we come back from the 27th. So each day she she's not at school, them. she should have seen the doctor that day. She did. She has the, Your Patrick Honor, I, I did. Hazel, let me. Uh, Your Honor, I did provide Miss Patrick for two weeks worth of excused absences. Your Honor, can I say something right quick? Go ahead. Um, I had got a phone call yesterday from the music teacher, and it sounds like to me that Elijah is not even getting her morning meds. The way that how she was talking to me is like Elijah was just were completely acting up in school, and I had told her. That um, that um, that uh, she needs to call her mom because, you know, I have this uh ex parte on me, so I really don't know what to do. So I really, I really think that, I really think that Miss Merritt is not giving Elijah her mess because they called me like three times. That's false. And so you know, I just you know, I'm lost in the sauce with this because I have this ex parte on me. So when they call me, which they supposed to be calling her. I don't even right. know what to do. They say that she don't even answer their phone calls. So All right. All right, Mr. that's Mr. not true. Address I that. really don't. Ms. Merritt. All right, Mr. O'Neill, the court's already addressed that. And once again, Ms. Uh, oh, Merritt, you need to uh, provide, pass on, when you do the exchange on Sunday, any prescribed medications within the NOFA. It's got instruction on the label. How often is it administered to your daughter? Is it every morning? Every she gets morning, it every night? morning, Your Honor. Every okay. morning I give her her medication. Okay, so make sure you pass it on to uh, Mr. O'Neill um, so that you can administer that to her next this next this coming week. Let's give it a try. May I, choose, oh. may I say something, Your Honor? Hazel, why don't you text it to me first? Well, while she's doing that, Your Honor, I'm unavailable the entire week of the 27th. Okay. Um, how about the... Um, so we're into March then. No. March 5th or 6th, let's we'll see if we have any availability. So, when I get this CPS. March 5th at 9 How about March 5th at 9 yeah. a.m., Mr. Coleman? So, March when I get this CPS report. That's great, Your Honor. I'm sorry, are you available, Mr. Coleman? March 5th at 9 a.m. Yeah, okay. So, Ms. Patrick, you can yes. change the date to review this March 5th at 9 a.m. Yes, Again, sure. uh, the mother shall exchange any prescribed medications to dad at the time of the parent time exchange. And we add the provision that uh, Carrie Phoenix shall not be present during dad's parenting time with his daughter. Uh, just want to make sure you understand that, Mr. O'Neill. She has therapy on Monday. Yes. Okay. Hold on. One thing at a time. Mr. O'Neill, do you understand that Carrie Phoenix shall not be present when your daughter's at your house? Yes. I think somebody okay. keeps muting me. I don't okay. know. Okay. Uh, Ms. Merritt, uh, where? Uh, so I, I can speak to the therapy. Hold on. Okay, where, where, uh, where, with whom is the appointment on Monday? It's with a therapist at Catherine Cobb in downtown Adrian, the name of the... Okay, w when did that start? I think three weeks ago. Okay. The beginning of January. Okay, how many times has uh, your daughter seen that therapist? She goes every single Monday. So she's gone four times? Yes, and she has therapy today because the therapist had to reschedule for today at four o'clock. Okay, well, she's uh, she, so you can get her today. Um, but I, I, of course, not going to order dad to drive to Adrian for this counseling appointment. Uh, we get a letter from the counselor, and, and if in fact that's critical, then we can address on February, on uh, March 5th. Um, anyway, can the two of you uh, communicate via app close? Maybe uh, there's got to be some communication between the parents, even though it's a PPO. So why don't we miss that? I would yeah, have that on I shall communicate via app close only. So they can I rather, discuss I rather keep the PPO. Oh, uh, um, okay. I'm sorry, okay. Mr. O'Neill, you keep interrupting. I'm trying to talk. 
and you keep interrupting the court. Uh, so what, what what was your comment, Mr. Mayor, Mr. O'Neill? I said that I'd rather keep the PPO on me. That's fine. But yeah, right now, uh, you're still exchanging the child. You're in close proximity. Why can't you communicate via echo? So I'll reduce the writing. So we have That's documentation fine, but... threatening the other party. You load this on your phone, app close, and all communication to be uh, via app close mm -hmm. only regarding your daughter. Can you do that? Okay. Yes, sir. All right, Ms. Patrick, it sends that all communication between the parents shall be via app close. They should be sharing the information yes, sharing about this, uh, this surgery. Well, uh, what's wrong with her ear? Who's doing the surgery? Um, the, the, the doctors, the, the med prescribed medication. The two of you as parents need to communicate that information with each other. So the court already both you communicate regarding the, the medical, the, the health and medical issues regarding your daughter, and all the communication via app close. And that's so, you know, forthwith. There's got to be communication. You brought this child into the world, you've got to raise her together. Um, and then we'll, we'll review this matter on March 5th at, They're not going to school. at 9 a.m. All right. I'm sorry. Anything further, Mr. Goldman? One small request, Your Honor, uh, that the minor child be allowed to keep her phone on her and that it not be removed in case she needs to make emergency communications. That's, that's reasonable. But no, she don't need no phone already. in my house. Hold on, Mr. O'Neill. We just we wait till you're asked. Uh, mom should be calling her every hour. Yes. Mr. Do you understand that, uh, Ms. Merritt? You're not going to call your daughter every hour. The I don't call my daughter every hour. Basis. Right. So that's, and if she needs you, she can call you. Uh, Mr. O'Neill, any objection to the court adding to this order that uh, your daughter should she be able to uh, retain possession of her phone? Mr. Excuse me. I didn't understand that, what you just said. Mr. Gordon yes. asked that as part of this order that we put in the order that your daughter can maintain possession of her phone when she's with you. Do you have any objection to that? Uh, yes, I do. What's your objection? Yes, yeah. My objection why? is that Alasia, she has her own phone here. Why she why she the phone from her so she can just keep calling her because that's what she's going to do. So she has two phones? And that's what she did the last time. She has two phones? She has a phone here. She has a phone here, but it's not on. It's just it's just for her. It's just for her, like, Wi-Fi and stuff like that to look at her little well, videos or she, she whatever. Should, that's she it. She should be allowed to call her mother if she needs to or wants to. Your Honor, All right. the last right, so the time that... All right, that Elijah right, had a the phone. Order, Ms. Ms. Merrick order. was calling her at four o'clock in the morning. Can you please include in the order that the minor child shall be able to uh, maintain her phone. Yes, Your Honor. Um, um, so, of course, you can order that, Mr. O'Neill. I understand your position. I've, I've heard when I can talk. She should, right? she should be able to call Honor, mother also... if she wants to, but Ms. Uh, Merrick, you should not be calling your daughter. Brower. Let your daughter call you if she needs you. Okay? Thank you. All right. Anything okay. further, Mr. O'Neill? Yes. Um. When I get this CPS report, which is, which I'm on the phone with her in a few minutes, because she sent us a email that's stating that, that um, that this case is over with. That's why I don't understand why you don't have the paperwork. You have everything else. You got the detective paperwork. I'm quite sure that you have a prosecutor paperwork that's up there too, because I she's none. being prosecuted. Okay. The Mr. Goldman has nothing, Ms. Patrick All has right. nothing, the court has nothing. All right. So if you're the only person in the world that has it, you should need to provide that. I don't understand why she didn't send the uh, email or whatever. She sent it over. I, I don't have an answer to that question, uh, Mr. O'Neill. But in any event, uh, you make the exchange on okay. Sunday. Uh, Elijah will be with you on, on, uh, from Sunday at 6 o'clock till the following Friday at 4 p.m. And then, of course, you'll exchange at Friday at 4 p.m. I'll exchange at the City Mural Police Department. We'll review this matter on March 5th at 9 a.m. you both be able to copy of this order. And all communications should, should be app close. And yes, the Dundee the Police Department halfway? App close. No. Nope. Your Honor? Hazel. I'm sorry, Your Honor. Please finish. All right, uh, that's that's it. I'm sorry. Did uh, Miss Merritt have a question? 
Well, one one thing the parties were previously exchanging at Dundee, which is halfway. Um, I understand. Okay, so the order is I, Monroe, not Dundee. I'm I'm aware. Um, uh, Miss Patch, was there a reason that you uh, did Monroe versus Dundee? Yes, Your Honor. The I believe the Dundee is a hardship for Mr. O'Neill, and Miss Merritt is the one that moved all the way to Lenaway. So, it, and we can review that on March fifth. But I was recommending the Monroe City Police. I understand, Your Honor. And the last time that I went, so up am there, I going to get gas money? Up. Am I going to get a reimbursement for this? Because that's not right on me that I have to drive all the way there when it wasn't my fault that I had to move. My house flooded out. I had nowhere to live out there. I had to move where I could. So how was it putting a hardship on me? Because he has a girlfriend that will drive him to the Dundee Police Department, and they were doing it that. So how is that fair? All right. I've been driving her back and forth to Monroe fair. Public Schools every day. All right. Uh, that's a good point. Mr. O'Neill, is there any reason why your girlfriend can't drive you to Dundee as you did previously? Because because she's she worked, and then like the last time that we went out there, Hazel did not show up at all. She did not show up out up there at all. We've been out there for two, two and a half hours waiting on her to come and get Elijah, and she did not show up. And then that's when all this stuff start I had flinging out, trouble. Right? all these bad allegations or whatever. I had car trouble is why I didn't make it. I had to have my sister go and pick her up from their house. Is fixed, so why do I, I? I work too, so why why do I have to be inconvenienced because he doesn't want to make the trip to Dundee? That's not fair. All right, so the, that's okay. We'll and, go back to what it was. And, and then, then I think, uh, if the court recalls, Miss Merritt moved before the court's last order where we uh, did the pickup to Dundee. So, Miss Patch, we'll, we'll have an exchange at Dundee. So, uh, Mr. Merritt, we're going to go back to what we did before the determination of times at Dundee rather than the city mineral police department. All right, okay, thank you. So it's probably halfway for, for both of you. Um, and the court recognizes, yes, the Mr. O'Neill should not drive all the way to Len Lenaway, and Ms. Mary should not drive all the way to Monroe. So the Dundee seems to be halfway. That was uh, ordered previously when uh, and after Ms. Merritt moved. So we'll go back to future parenting time exchanges shall be at the Dundee Police Department. Can I request one thing? Hazel. Your Honor, can they just meet me on Monday so she can go to therapy and I'll meet them back in Dundee? Because therapy is going really good for her and it's really, truly needed for her. I mean, the use parents talking app close between that. She needs to go to school on Monday morning. I'm not sure what time her appointment is. Maybe Mr. Her, O'Neill, if you if you if you share the pressure, her therapy is at four. Her therapy is at four o'clock. But once it's you see if you can appointment. Once you so I'll see if you can reschedule it this week. That's what the court suggests. Call the therapist, see whether you can you can, they can squeeze her in sometime this week, and you can take her. I'm taking her today, but when she has to go next Monday. He'll have her. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'll meet him just so she can stay in there. this marriage before the court on the plaintiff's of father's motion for custody and parenting time. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Present is attorney Christopher Bogard, representing the plaintiff's of father, Christian Short. Mr. Short, there is the present. And also yes, serves the ma'am, you are Julianne. Yes, sir. Pollock, is that correct? All right. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, for the record, this court did enter an expert's order on January 15, 2024, which awarded plaintiff father temporary possession of minor child Scarlett until we could have this hearing today. The parties have appeared. They have conferred with Mr. Walker from the front of the court. Mr. Walker has provided the court a fine recommendation, which have adopted will become an order of the court that the um, plaintiff father should be awarded to legal and physical custody of the three year old minor child. Mother shall have reasonable liberal parenting time when she is in the state of Michigan. That is a recommendation. Um, Ms. Mahalik, do you understand the recommendation? Yes, sir. Do you have any objection to the court adopting the recommendation? No, sir. Okay. You are currently residing in the state of Georgia, is that correct? Yes, sir. Okay. You need to provide the front of the court with a, uh, an address, a million address, so that they can be mailed these orders and so forth. And if you change your address, you always need to keep the front of the court appointment a change of address. That, that, of course, applies to both you and Mr. Short. Uh, so both of you should know where the other parent is living at all times. Uh, yes, sir. You do, um, in, the, in the interim, um, can you provide Mr. Uh, you can uh, you can Google the front of the court, go online and, and get that form and fill it out. Um, short of that, can you provide us on the record with your current mailing address? You want my current mailing address at this moment? Correct. Okay. It is us. Okay. Mr. Walker, if you were able to hear that, if you can uh, note that for the front of the court records. Yes, Your Honor, I did hear that. I have noted it. Wonderful. Thank you so much. 
Mr. Mahat, do you intend the so copies will be mailed to you? Do you intend to uh, reside yeah. in Britain for the for the immediate uh, future? Yes, sir. Okay. Right, um, Mr. Bogart. Obviously, this recommendation is agreeable with your client. Is that correct? Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Um, Mr. Uh, Mr. Shore is not requesting child support at this point in time. Is that correct? Correct. I, um, Mr. Short, do you able to provide uh, for the needs of this child? I can provide for this child, yes. Uh, health insurance? Health insurance, yes. Dental, vision. Okay. And you can provide for the, the child's financial needs as well as emotional needs? Yes, ma'am. Or yes, sir. All right. All right. Uh, Ms. Pollock, do you have any questions of the court? No, sir. Uh, would you agree this is in the best interest of your child at this point in time that the child be uh, stay with father and the dad be awarded to, on the, to further order to physical legal custody? Yes, sir. All right. Mr. Borger, do you have any questions for either party? Uh, your Honor, not at this time, no. All right. Uh, well, the court generally feels that the agreement between the parties is generally in the best interest of the minor child. And uh, um, I guess one last question, Ms. Mock. No one's threatened you in any way in order to get your covenant agreement. You're not under the influence of anything today. Is that correct? No, sir. All right. All right. Court will adopt the recommendation. Uh, copies be mailed to both of you. Good luck. Uh, and obviously, Ms. Mahalik, you need to be a uh, part of this child's life. Uh, so um, hopefully that can occur as the child ages. All right. All right, that will close here. You can all zoom out and have a good rest of the afternoon. Thank you, Your Honor. You and your staff Thank as well. Thank you. All right, for Dr. Mr. Montroy, these two cases have been elevated to this court. Presumably for the reason, Mr. Montroy, that you are not uh, paying your child support, not working in property with the front of the court. Uh, um, so this, this hearing, hold on, this hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Also present is the Rock for attorney, Rebecca Hicks. Um, Mr. Montroy, what's your current mailing address? Four to four. Mr. Montre, the address the court has on file is a third. You need to keep, you have an obligation in front of the court for a change of address. So if you don't uh, form the front of the court that you move and you get no security don't appear, that's when a bench warrant's issued. And, and so you need to come out in front of the court, fill out a form, change your address. Yes, sir. Um, Mr. Montre, it's never good when you're brought before the court. That means the front of the court is asking for jail jail time. Um, you put yourself in this position, Miss Fixing you, get the court, the court some background information regarding these two matters involving Mr. Montre, please. Um, certainly, Your Honor. Uh, Mr. Montroy does have previous findings of contempt on both files. The date of contempt is May 6, 2019. It is a first finding, and there is a 28-day balance on both files. Um, these are currently arrears-only cases, Your Honor. However, um, we are enforcing at a monthly payment amount based on the fact that he has felony non-support convictions on both of these, and a term of his probation is to pay the arrears off at a monthly rate. So on the 2015 case with um, Haley Brothers, the current arrears balance is $15,474.18, and he is supposed to be paying that at $500 per month. On the 2010 case with Cassandra Perriott, the arrears balance is $10,466.45. He's supposed to be paying that at the rate of $336 per month, Your Honor. He was last in front of the front of the court on our show cause on December 5th. At that time, we adjourned it over. We're, we're very explicit in, as to how much he had to pay and what that amount was for. Today, just to be current, through January, he should have paid $1,768 more than what we have received. We've not received a payment since December 1st, and that was meant to be his November payment, Your Honor. Uh, so you're asking the court to order Mr. Montreal to serve the 28 days in jail? That is correct, Your Honor. Mr. Montreal, are you still on probation? Yes, yes, Your Honor. I'm surprised the probation has not been violated. Who's your probation officer? Um, Vincent Palladino. When did you last, uh, how often do you see Mr. Palladino? Uh, I see him once a month. When did you last see him? It was the um, third, third Wednesday of December, or January, sorry. What was the subject of your conversation at that time? He, he was just wondering if I was still working um, and staying, you know, staying out of trouble. Okay, well, I guess that's, uh, uh, this court's more interested in uh, collecting these words than he is. 
Um, you're, you're, I, I, I can honestly say I can, I can by the end of this week, Friday, I can have the seventeen hundred dollars for sure. Right. What time do you? What kind? What time do you come in and pay that on Friday? Um, I can be in there. For, I can honestly, I can make an online payment. I just have to find out that, the docket, uh, the, the Michigan that won't, docket. Right. It yes. won't work. You need, you need to appear in person because online payment, you can revoke that, cancel that. Uh, it takes a number of maybe five days. You need to come in and pay cash. What time can you come in on Friday and pay cash of one thousand seven hundred sixty eight dollars? Um, I can, I can be there by the time they close. Well, you got uh, this. Whatever the courts required, you be here at eleven fifteen on Friday. Can you, will you have your money by then? Eleven fifteen a.m. Um, is there and, any, and, is there? And I let you bring two thousand dollars cash or toothbrush, right? Yes, Your Honor. All right. So you appear at Judge Bond's court at. Uh, We'll give you, a, then we'll set another date. So you can avoid jail if you can pay $2,000 on on a Friday. That'll keep your probation officer happy too. And uh, if we can pay 2000 the court will, uh, will adjourn us out. If you don't have that paid, then you're going to go to jail for 20 days. Now, so, is it is it $2,000 or is it the 1700 2000 According to this court, it's 2000 You have to bring current $1,716, but you got pretty significant arrearages. That's round, like, I, like, I like round figures. $2,000 sounds a ni nice round figure. So you can do seventeen sixty eight. you can certainly come up with the uh, $2,000. So reach out to family and friends. Yes, Your Honor. Okay, you heard that one of the parties present. Uh, you are Haley Brothers. Yes. All right, so Miss Bell, you just appeared. The court has ordered Mr. Montray to appear personally in this court at 15 on Friday of this week. That is February 9th. And to pay $2,000. If he can't do that, then he's going to bring his toothbrush and he'll go to jail for 28 days. Okay. And that has to be paid in cash because then we know it's paid. You can appear if you want, Miss Montre, Miss Brothers, but you're not required to, right? Okay. And presumably that uh, two thousand dollars would be split between the two cases. Is that correct, Miss X? How would you handle that? The two thousand dollar payment. Yeah, we would split it according to yeah. We would. I would just split it evenly because one is owed a thousand dollars and one is owed seven sixty eight. Just to be current, so I would just put a thousand on each of them. I'd All have right. the front desk apply it. All right. Any questions, Miss Brothers? No. All right, uh, Mr. Montre, any other questions? No, Your Honor. Okay, we'll see you on Friday, 11.15, and uh, it should be quick. Yeah, but uh, stop making the, the, the payment downstairs. Um, it's in front of the court. Bring up the receipt, and if so, then we'll get you on the record real quick. And we'll give you a new date to come back for review, and you can avoid spending the next 20 days in jail if you can pay that, make that payment. So we're hoping you can uh, make that happen. All right, we'll see you on Friday, then, February 9th, 11.15. Thank you, Your Honor. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Judge. I'll get those orders yep. uploaded. Okay, Ms. Six, thank you. For the record, this matter is before the court for the purpose of reviewing uh, parenting time. This hearing is being conducted via Zoom. Present is attorney Stephen Jednak, representing the plaintiff, uh, Derek Verley. Mr. Verley appears to be present with Mr. Jednak. In addition, attorney Michael Keeney is present representing defendant mother, Sheila Hall. Ms. Shaw Hall is present. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, Your Honor. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Court entered, court entered an initial parenting time order back in December of 2023. The parties have conferred. Uh, with Miss Patrick, his child is growing up quickly, now five months old. The recommendation is that father, uh, plan father should have plenty of time every Friday at 3 p.m. until Saturday at 5 p.m. and every Monday and Wednesday from 3 p.m. to 8 p.m. So it looks like uh, uh, providing for overnights on Fridays, every Friday, overnight. Um, Plenty of father pick up the minor child at daycare and return to the parent mother at the Dundee Police Department. And the finally, the parties will appear back for his court to review parenting time on April 23rd, 2024 at 10 a.m. Um, that is a recommendation. Mr. Jennick, is this recommendation good with your client this afternoon? Your Honor, I'm sorry to interrupt, but there's a little bit more on the second page. I apologize. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. I'm just going down. Uh, thank you, Ms. Patrick. It's also recommended that the parties will alternate claiming the minor child is dependent for tax purposes with mother having odd years, starting with 2023, father will have even years. Party shall communicate via app close regarding the minor child's needs, naps, food and diaper changes as previously ordered. Defendant mother will freeze all breast milk that she sends to play the father for his parenting time. Thank you, Ms. Patrick. That's the full recommendation. Mr. Jennings, this recommendation, recommendation agree with your client? We accept. Thank you. Mr. Keyes, this recommendation agree with your client? It is, Your Honor. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, both parties did participate in the discussions uh, this afternoon with Ms. Patrick. Would either counsel like to voir dire your respective clients? 
I don't think it's necessary. Thank you. I agree with Mr. Jednick, Your Honor. Wonderful. Uh, I would like to thank and acknowledge Ms. Patrick, as well as, of course, Attorneys uh, Keeney and Jednick for helping facilitate resolution. The court would applaud you and mom and dad uh, for uh, reaching your own agreement. Uh, and hopefully this is the start of a good thing where you can work together for the benefit of your child. Um, there's enough challenges in life. So uh, work together. Communication is the key. Very well. If there's nothing further, the court with pleasure will adopt the recommendation. That will conclude this matter. You can all zoom out. Thank you again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Welcome. In front of the court, we provide the court find the recommendation. Um, and follows plenty of time, shall continue with family counseling shelter services pending further review. Part of to show the cost of those visits. Mr. Ott shall sign releases for the attorneys so that uh, Ms. Kuhn can, and as well as Ms. Ryan Hammer can communicate with Dr. Mufti. And the parties will appear back for his court to review parenting time April 2nd, 2024 at 2.30 p.m. That is the recommendation. Uh, the court uh, is uh, Mr. Ott currently exercising parenting time with uh, Family College Health Services or is there still a backward? Oh, that that's and part of that if i may your honor steven reinheimer again on behalf of uh mr ott your honor this was both as you pointed out the review hearing as well as mr ott's motion to see if we could remove some of the supervised parenting time requirements he has been exercising parenting time at um uh, family counseling and shelter services uh as per the december 5th uh order of this court adopting the recommendation of friend of the court um in november and in, in pursuant to a hearing that happened in september uh, mr ott was to start exercising supervised parenting time to be supervised by uh his mother uh which was just the only alternative that was available mr ott was never fond of the idea but in any event um ms hamilton didn't cooperate uh with the parenting time uh, with being a supervisor, never gave Mr. Ott any, you know, availability. She what she insisted on being provided with a psychological evaluation before she would do it. When the, the judge's order, your order, your honor, uh, in September did not require that. Uh, it did require that he provide uh, a uh, a clean drug test to the supervisor bef before it would commence. And so we tried to communicate with Ms. Hamilton that that was not the order of the court. There is no psychological evaluation required for her for that to move forward. It never happened. In the meantime, and it's part of the record that we made back in September, where it was very clear that if Mr. Ott came back with uh, uh, a clean bill of, of mental health, that it would that that would be the 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 bar to which the requirement for supervised parenting time could be removed altogether. Mr. Uh, Mr. Ott uh, paid an office visit to Dr. Mufti, who was the, his, the original treating physician around the time of the entry of the judgment. Um, Dr. Mufti gave him really a clean bill of health uh, on the mental health issues. I'm looking for my copy of that report in which Dr. Mufti uh, indicates uh, that, uh, I'm looking for some specific language, I'm sorry. His treatment plan says, Dr. Mufti says, patient does not present with any psychiatric symptoms that would warrant treatment. And says he's been in remission since 2021 and reports that he has not had any cravings for substances. And he's advised to follow up if there's any changes, according to Mr. Ott. Anyway, I didn't meet with Dr. Mufti, but very pleased to see Mr. Ott's progress since he last saw him. So originally we had filed this motion to try and remove the supervised parenting time requirement. Um, when we met with a friend of the court on December 5th, um today this that motion that we filed back then was adjourned to today um mr ott was required to uh present for uh drug testing at um uh, i forgot um uh, reliable as it were uh drug testing in sylvania ohio he had some problems getting to that particular location within the 24 hours of that hearing so he went to quest diagnostics uh got a negative report uh on substances um, including alcohol, if I'm not mistaken, um, on that particular occasion. That was not satisfactory to plaintiff. Um, and so we did not move forward with some scheduled parenting time 
again with Ms. Hamilton, um, Mr. Ah then did finally make it to reliable drug testing. He again tested negative for any substances. Um, and um, it was we went forward with the supervised at Family Counseling and Shelter Services. There have been maybe uh, three visits since that time. Uh, some of, you know, there have been some interruptions for some child illnesses. Uh, the, the daughter of the parties, who is three, not quite as familiar with Mr. Ott as is the, his son, who is six, uh, does not, you know, is kind of spooked by the somewhat sterile, I, I know it's probably a nicer place than I'm making out, but still it's an unfamiliar location uh, to the, the daughter. She's a little reticent to spend supervised parenting time in there. She seemed to spend more time when the supervisor stepped away from the room a bit. But in any event, the, Mr. Uh, Ott's son, uh, Boyd, spent uh, some quality time, uh, as was reflected in the many reports that we've gotten from Family Counseling and Shelter Services. Lots of interaction. Mr. Boyd brought some games, some toys that were interactive that they could work on together. Mr. Boyd and uh, Mr. Uh, Ott could, you know, give some instruction as to what he does for a living, which is masonry. And they did a lot of, you know, very interesting and interactive things. Um, and it's Mr. Ott's position today that we're, we'd like to move forward with maybe some limited unsupervised parenting time, at least with his son. We recognize that his relationship with his daughter may, know, may still need some work. We'd like to move forward with that. Ms. Coon's going to come forward and say, Mr. Uh, Ott's a big fat liar, uh, that Mr. Dr. Uh, Mufti's report is based on some false reporting of Mr. Uh, Ott, that apparently Mr. Ott knows how to fool three or four different um, uh, drug testing agencies as he's tested negative at uh, both reliable at, uh, I forgot the name of the other one, I can't even keep track of them anymore. He also did some work up in the Sheboygan area, took a drug test there, and they found it to be negative as well. So he's taken ad nauseum drug tests. He has proven to be negative every time. Dr. Mufti has said he has no di he has nothing to, to be concerned about, and he, you know, We'd like to move forward now, you know, so we, you know, we're, the recommendation, as the court noted, is to continue the uh, uh, supervised parenting time at, uh, at family counseling and shelter services that we're going to, I guess, Ms. Uh, Kuhn's going to dig into some, um, you know, whatever she can get once there's a clearance or a waiver for her to access records and talk to Mr. or Dr. Mufti and whatever. So everybody can be absolutely 100% certified that there really isn't anything wrong with Mr. Ott and he can continue on an unsupervised basis. Of course, I'm sure that counsel is going to find some hitch in that and there'll be another problem. And, you know, there, there's going to be yet, you know, if they don't like the answer there, they'll move on to something else. So not sure, you know, Mr. Ott has met every hurdle that this court has laid out for him in trying to get back into a, a normal parenting time uh, situation with his children. He is not addicted to methamphetamines or cocaine as he was at the time of the divorce. He does consume alcohol from time to time. He's never been diagnosed as an alcoholic. He does not uh, drink, you know, he doesn't, you know, get blackout drunk or anything like that. He certainly is in proper uh, condition whenever he's exercising parenting time. So um, he's not consumed any illegal substances uh, and he's ready to move forward. That, that seems to be what we see from family and counsel, family counseling and shelter services, seems to be what we see from Dr. Mufti, and it seems to be what, what we see from the voluminous drug testing that he's done since November, really. Um, so with that, Your Honor, we're asking the court today um, to uh, just remove the, the supervised requirement. Maybe we have a limited, uh, you know, we can take baby steps with at least Mr. Ott's uh, son, as he seems to be ready to move forward. We shouldn't let the child, the daughter's issues, hold back the relationship with the son. And still, you know, if we could have the supervised parenting time for both children and then sprinkle in some, you know, limited unsupervised time for uh, Boyd and Mr. Ott, that would be uh, the, the relief that Mr. Ott is seeking today. So uh, that that's Mr. Ott's motion, Your Honor. All right. Thank you, Mr. Meinheimer. The court should note for the record that Tammy Hamilton is the defendant's mother. Most mothers know their children pretty well. And of course, the court cannot ignore that Ms. Coon is attached to her response of pleading an affidavit signed by Ms. Hamilton. And it just to floors this court that a child, in this case, Ms. Rock, would treat a mother in such a fashion. Well, if uh, I so may, Your Honor. The mother was concerned maybe about drugs, but obviously about his mental well being. 
so that that is telling to this court um, in terms of. May uh, I address that, Your Honor? Because there's been some Mr. new information. Mr. Reinheimer, can you not interrupt? You've been going on for 15 minutes. I haven't had an opportunity to respond, and the court is talking. Well, with all due respect, Ms. Kuhn, Judge Bronlick brought up a, a factor that I didn't no, but, anticipate, but and I'd like to address it based on well, new let, information that, let, I, that I have. Let the court finish. All right. All right, but I just don't have for the record that Tammy Hamilton, who was the actual supervisor, she set her own rules, and I don't blame her. Yes, the court has no jurisdiction over Tammy Hamilton, but obviously she must have had a good reason why she imposed that additional restriction on the agreement and willingness to supervise plenty of time for her son. But go ahead, Mr. Ryan, if you're going to address well, that after the time by Ms. Hamilton. Thank you, Your Honor. I appreciate that. Thank you. Uh, so what has come to light, and Mr. Uh, I brought to my attention that uh, a report that was generated in Ms. Hamilton's divorce case from Mr. Ott's mother, a uh, father, geez, I'm getting mixed up. Uh, back 30 in years ago? 20, in 2000. Thank you, Ms. Good. 23 Thank years you. ago. I, you know what? For someone who's, you know, talking about interrupting. In any event, uh, Ms. Ms. Hamilton, uh, the issue in that case, <laughs> Ms. Hamilton pretty much abandoned Mr. Ott and his sister uh, and in favor of a uh, marrying her first cousin with whom she was having a child and she didn't see anything particularly wrong with that she did and the, the, the evaluator in that case had great issue with that and uh you know and held it you know as a negative in that evaluation quite a bit so i call into question any of ms hamilton's judgment as to what may or may not be wrong with her son if who she's had very limited contact with and has very, i would s s indicate a negative relationship from since he was 12 years old. But in any event, that, that, that's what the record I wanted to make, Your Honor. Can I, can right, I respond, sir. Your Honor? Yes, Please. I just wanted to, did Dr. Bufti submit to everyone an updated report? No. Uh, no. He, he, well, he provided a report in November of 2023, which I provided to Ms. Kuhn. I provided it to friend of the court as requested uh, in the December 5th order. And there hasn't been any activity since then, Your Honor, no. Okay. Yeah, the court likes an updated report from Dr. Mufti that was uh, suggested on December 5 uh, that a mental health report from Dr. Mufti will be provided to uh, Ms. Uh, Kuhn and the front of the court. So I, I'm not, I just want to make sure I didn't miss something, Mr. Reinheimer. Oh, okay. Uh, I didn't understand that to say an updated report. I just thought it meant the report from November of 2023. Okay. All right, so Ms. Kuhn. Thank you so much, Your Honor. So the, the report is an office visit dated November 14, 2023. Chief complaint, Mr. Rod says, my mother wanted me to see you. Basically, the history of present illness was that he had presented with a significant past psychiatric history of mood disorder and substance abuse. He stated that he has not used any drugs since March of 2021 and has been sober. Basically, Mr. Ott represented to Dr. Mufti that he has been clean and sober since November of 2021. What's important to note about that, Your Honor, is that in October of 2023, a, um, a, a um, drug and alcohol screen was um, submitted to the front of the court, which showed that Mr. Ott uh, tested uh, positive on his um, on the um, long-term alcohol screen. In addition, Mr. Ott has admitted smoking marijuana on November 20th of 2023 and consuming alcohol on December 5th of 2023. Now, the fact that this report was generated, this office visit on November 14th, and Mr. Ott represented to Dr. Mufti that he's been clean and sober since March of 2021, that tells me that Mr. Ott was not truthful with Dr. Mufti, and that also would indicate to me that any finding by Dr. Mufti would be not accurate, given the false self-report by Mr. Ott. In addition, Mr. Ott has a past medical history of bipolar 1 disorder. Never heard of bipolar 1 disorder disappearing. We have significant history of substance abuse. We have a significant history of mental health. We have a three-year-old and a six-year-old. They're babies, Your Honor. Given the, you know what also floors me, Your Honor, is if you look at Mr. Reimheimer's motion to modify parenting time, 
if you look at um, paragraph states in here, paragraph seven, defendant father completed a substance abuse rehabilitation program in August 2021 and has remained clean and sober since that time. If you look up the definition of clean and sober, that means refraining from alcohol and any illegal substances. If you look at page eight of this motion, it states on November 28th, so that was after the October 2023 positive alcohol screen, Mr. Or Ott declared under penalty of perjury that the foregoing statements in this motion are true to the best of my knowledge, information, and belief. Mr. Ott states that he still consumes alcohol. He still smokes marijuana. He's not doing it right now because he's getting random tested. But my point to you, Your Honor, is that Mr. Ott is a poly substance abuser. Mr. Ott has not been truthful to this court. Mr. Ott committed perjury by signing this because he had, an, he had a positive screen. In addition, Mr. Ott was ordered to go to reliable drug testing. And Mr. Ott sent a text message stating that he was five hours away and couldn't get to that testing center. But when he got caught lying, because when I talked to LabCorp and found out that he tested in Monroe on the next day during the 24-hour time period, he got busted. He got caught. My point, Your Honor, is Mr. Ott is not truthful. He has not been truthful to his attorney. I can't imagine that opposing counsel would submit any motion um, and have his client sign it um, knowing that. So I don't think he's been, I don't think he's been truthful to his attorney. He has not been truthful to this court. There is a significant history. I am asking the court to order that Mr. Ott um, have a have a psychological evaluation with Dr. Zubin Mystery, who the court is well aware of. Um, Dr. Mystery has been, um, he's been doing mental health evaluations for Monroe County Courts for years. In addition, I'm asking that he submit to a um, comprehensive substance abuse evaluation with Mr. Simonton, who the court also is well aware of and who has done so many substance abuse evaluations. I would also ask that Mr. Ott be ordered to sign any releases so that neither of these professionals are relying on faulty, misleading, and inaccurate self-reports because that's all we've been getting. So I'm really concerned, Your Honor. I think that this case begs for an independent evaluation with Dr. Mystery as well as an independent evaluation by Paul Simonton. If and then Mr. Ott is able to quit denying that he has a problem, quit relapsing, is on proper medication, my client would love nothing more than his children, their children, to have a healthy and safe relationship. There are concerns. There's been attempts in the past. This is not a case where we should be using the kids as, as a test to see if Mr. Ott, who hasn't been honest with anyone, is going to be okay. I just think there's too much risk here, Your Honor. All right, thank you, Ms. Kuhn. Uh, Mr. Reinhaber, is Mr. Ott engaging with Dr. Mufti just for his mental health issues, but also for substance abuse issues? No, Your Honor, as the court may recall, we were here back in September. There was a concern about uh, that, and the court had indicated that if he wanted to remove the supervised parenting time, he needed to go pay Dr. Mufti a visit. He's not treating with Dr. Mufti at all. He okay. had a great difficulty scheduling an appointment with Dr. Mufti. Uh, and, but he was able to get in and he saw Dr. Mufti who gave that analysis. And so he does not treat with Dr. Mufti. He's not treating with anyone at present. And most, and he's got many, Dr. Mufti indicates he's not presenting with any issues that require treatment. He's treat, he's gotten reports from Sheboygan mental health where they're saying, I can't refer you for anything because you don't have anything for us to deal with. So, you know, he would do it in a minute. He's, you know, he's operating a business. He, you know, he's, you know, upstanding citizen. He's just trying to jump through these hoops, Your Honor. And so I find it hard to believe he could be operating, you know, a, a viable business in the in masonry industry uh, if he was, um, you know, a substance abuser and bipolar untreated. Um, you know, he's, you know, there's been no, there's been no police reports. There's no bit aberrant behavior. There's no, there's been nothing at any of the, the uh, supervised visits that would indicate any unusual or aberrant behavior by Mr. Ott. Uh, he's quite, the, 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 the reports I saw from supervised parenting time, quite an innovative, you know, an engaged parent who brought some things 
that he could do with his son that were interactive and they could talk about and ask questions about. Quite interesting. It wasn't a, a person who was, you know, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, as we often portray these bipolar individuals. Um, nothing of the kind. Um, so, you know, if, if there's going to be an evaluation, um, th these things are typically very expensive. And I would ask that, you know, that, that plaintiff share in the cost of these things. He's got nothing to hide. And he's just, you know, he took like three or four drug tests in the span of a month. It was quite expensive. Um, so if that's going to happen, you know, uh, you know, people have to have some financial skin in the game, you know, in order to, uh, to make this happen. He's got nothing to hide. Um, we would ask, you know, there's some concern about, uh, a plaintiff's, you know, at one time evidenced some, uh, you know, postpartum depression and some other suicidal indications, you know, back, you know, around the time of the divorce. You know, maybe there's an evaluation for both parties that needs to happen. Um, but in any event. Your Honor, Your Honor, Mr. Ott was jailed in August of 2023 for retail fraud, which is a crime involving dishonesty and open intoxicants. The, the alcohol issue what? is a real issue. It is continuing. He was jailed. He was in jail in retail August of 2023. Fraud. Yes, for retail fraud. Yes. He pled guilty. To, he pled guilty to it. And operating while license suspended? Yeah. I look at the eye chat. I don't know if he shared that with you either, counsel. He got he was arrested for trespassing around that time. Nothing that I nothing else that I'm aware of. He was looking at some property to a retail fraud conviction in the prior pleadings, but in any event, uh, the court does have notes here that I previously informed Mr. Ott that supervision requirement will, can, will not be removed or lifted until the court has received an updated mental evaluation. And the court simply suggested, uh, because uh, Dr. Mufti had treatment passed, but so obviously if Dr. Mufti is not currently treating him, Dr. Mufti is going to only write what he's been, what's been reported to him, which is not a full picture. But obviously unless Ms. Um, the paternal grandmother um, is uh, committing perjury in her affidavit. I mean, Tammy Hamilton had certainly suggested some, in, some uh, unusual, inappropriate conduct action on the part of Mr. Ott that would suggest that there's, uh, there's some issues, whether it's it's mental or under the influence. So, uh, yes, I think in order to fully badly, Mr. Ott, we need something more. And I don't uh, know if Dr. Mystery is the person to do that. And uh, obviously, um, it benefit both parties. I don't know, Miss. Kuhn, what's your thought on the party sharing the cost of such an evaluation? I'm fine with the party sharing the cost of the evaluation. I would ask, though, Your Honor, that the parties be ordered to sign any releases so that Dr. Mystery could get all of the past history from any of the uh, mental health providers or any of the substance abuse treatment facilities. I would think that Dr. Mystery, I'm, I don't know if I... Apologies if I'm mispronouncing his name. That would be part of his intake is for Mr. Uh, Ott to sign such a release so he could gather any collateral information. But he, if the court wants to enter that, Mr. Ott has nothing to hide here, Your Honor. So he'll okay. be happy to sign any release whatsoever. Um, I'm just looking for some means by which we can move this matter forward so Mr. Ott can develop a normal relationship with these children. And I think uh, further communication with Dr. Mufti may not be uh, very valuable if, in fact, since Mr. Rod is not treating with him, I, I guess it's I did not, misunderstood. I thought he was treating with him in some of the past. So I'm not sure he could provide any, any uh, helpful current information. Maybe an evaluation would be appropriate. I don't know if you know Dr. Mystery or do you have someone in mind, Mr. Reinheimer, that you would I suggest? don't really, Your Honor. Not that that's, you know, convenient for the parties. If the court is satisfied with Dr. Mis Mystery and it's been a, a, you know, who has provided information to the court in the past, I'm satisfied that they, he, he's more than adequate. Dr. Mystery's office is, is in Toledo. Is that correct, Ms. Kuhn? I believe yes. Oh, well, then that might be a problem. I didn't know that part. <laughs> yeah. There might um, be, I don't know, somebody in Washington or somebody of that, uh, you know, well, caught me flat-footed on that one. I apologize. Yeah. yeah. And Mr. about Reinhardt, this other Stapleton person or whoever it is? Perhaps you and Ms. Kuhn can, can agree upon someone. I, uh, I don't want to uh, force Dr. Mystery upon you. You may want to research his background. Um, maybe get some idea of the, 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 his costs. Well, that's fine, Your Honor. If the, if the court wants to indicate a mutually agreed upon uh, evaluator uh, or whatever you want to call it, then that's fine. Your Honor, does does Your Honor have any reservations with Dr. Mystery? 
I do not, but I'd want to force up on Mr. Reinheimer if he's not familiar with him. I'd like the doctor, Mr. Reinheimer should have an opportunity to at least maybe Google or check some of his colleagues about if they know Dr. Mystery or maybe come up with someone else that may that he would prefer and maybe he can too. We, we may agree. end up with that Dr. Mystery as, uh, as well, uh, but if, maybe if we had some, you know, and right. especially the location in Toledo, I don't know if he's going to insist on Mr. Ott appearing in person, perhaps, you know, or what have you, but that, that could be a hardship. Mr. Ott, you know, he works, he has masonry jobs in Sheboygan and Waterford and, you know, all over the place. So um, I wouldn't want that to be an impediment to his cooperation. Well, Toledo is not that far from Monroe. If he can, if he can go to Family College Health Services, he can go to Toledo. Maybe just the initial intake, yeah. he may want to see someone, value someone in person, and the further follow-ups can be by Zoom. So the mm -hmm. court's not going to order that this time, but the court suggested. I mean, I think that would uh, would assist the court in moving forward to have some normalized printing time. But at the, this point in time, the court believes that the printing time shall continue with Family College Health Services, and that is done. What is it every other week, or is it I done more than one week, month? On, it, on the availability of the uh, agency, I believe. Okay. So hopefully every week, and then price will continue to share the cost of those visits. So that's what the court will order at this time. Um, Mr. Austin, but the court is ordering the Dr. evaluation. Is that right? I'm sorry. The court is ordering an evaluation to be conducted by a mutually agreed upon evaluator. Yes. If, if, uh, if, they, if we would that be agreeable, Ms. Coon? And if we can't agree upon one, I can perhaps make that decision the next time. If you cannot agree upon evaluator, I'd like to see if we'll you get it. Come we'll get it done, Your Honor. Moving. Yeah, we'll get it done. That's okay. It's certainly, I was going to suggest that, but if everyone asks, uh, I will order that the parties. Um, That's will fine. Will this be an evaluation of both parties, or just we're talking about the, uh, Mr. Ott, correct? I know you raised issues about uh, Miss Ott. You know, Your Honor, let's just it. let's just get get going. Let's you know, okay. you know, Mr. Right. Reidenheimer, do you are you comfortable with Mr. Mystery so we can get these people just going now so we can move sure. forward? I just don't I, want to I know. This. Just in the interest of. Getting, getting a it done, dog I moving think, forward? I think okay. so. But I, I, the court also ordering the drug abuse assessment, or is that? With Mr. Well, can, Dr. Mystery, can, Mr. can Dr. Mystery address that as well? No. I don't think so. I, th I, I agree with counsel. If Mr. Simonton, are you okay with Mr. Simonton? I know there is another, uh, there's a, a doctor um, who used to work at Wayne County, and he's got an office, and I can't, he's presented at ICLE previously and i can't think of his name uh wooten dr wooten he's um actually doing custody evaluations so i have him on another case right now actually i'm not sure if he's doing case. substance abuse but um i don't think so i think he's oh, he is no he is he is doing it because he took over for uh lanny mccrill who used to he's retired he took over that Mr. business Ms. good i think mr simpton he just stepped down as a drug court administrator so i don't think mr simpton be willing to do that so why don't you the course of order that uh, mr ott Submit to a psychological as well as substance abuse evaluation by an agreeable party. Very right. good. Dr. That's Smith. perfect, Your Honor. Thank uh, you for your help. Uh, on. If you can agree upon Mr. Mystery, I want Mr. Reinheimer at least Google Mr. Mystery, and, uh, and if he's agreeable, then let's get that started. No, Same I, with the substance abuse evaluation. Can... If Dr. Wood can do that, then uh, then uh, we'll do that. So it's a, uh, a, psycholo a psychi psychological evaluation as well as substance abuse evaluation. I think that would move the matter forward. So the court ordered that to be done by a mutually agreeable uh, party. Right. Okay. And, and they're each what splitting the cost? Yes. Yes. Price was shared okay. equally the cost and the okay. review, review all these issues April 2nd, 2024, 2 30 p.m. Okay. Very good. Thank you, Your Honor. Thank, Thank you for you. your patience. All right. Anything further than Mr. Reinheimer, Ms. Kuhn? Nothing so. further for me, Your Honor. All right. Thank you both. And Ms. Lepreff, if you can modify the recordation, that'd be greatly appreciated. All right. Everyone can zoom out. Have the rest of the day. Thank you, Your Thank Honor. You, you too. Mr. Ott, I'm going to call you in a minute. So, Your Honor, yeah. just for clarification, um, you said just Mr. Ott at this point is doing the evaluations? Correct. Uh, okay. Mr. Ott shall, shall submit to a uh, psychological as well as substance, uh, substance abuse evaluation to be performed by an agreeable third party. Okay. Thank I'll you. I'll get Your that Honor. in your queue. Thank you. For the record, this matter is before the court and the defendant submerged the motion to modify custody parenting time. Um, this hearing is being conducted via Zoom. The president is Attorney Maria Zagorski, representing the plaintiff father, Edward Jacobson. Mr. Jacobson is present. In addition, Attorney uh, Kevin Kajewski is present, representing the defendant mother, Tammy Jacobson. Ms. Jacobson is present. For the record, the court would note that the court did enter next part the order on January 23rd, 2024, awarding defendant mother temporary possession of the two minor children of the parties, a 14-year-old and 11-year-old. Uh, the parties have conferred with Mr. Walker for the front of the court this afternoon. Mr. Walker has provided the court with fine recommendation that the next part the order, day January 23rd, 2024, be vacated as to minor child hunter. 
but it will continue with respect to the minor child McKenzie. Mother shall be allowed to enroll the minor child McKenzie in Jefferson schools. Uh, after April after April 1st, 2024, the minor child McKenzie shall start therapy for the purpose of repairing her relationship with her father. The parties shall agree upon that the identity of that therapist. Father's parenting time with McKenzie shall be as recommended by that therapist. That is the recommendation. Uh, Ms. Gorski, is this recommendation agreeable with your client this afternoon? Yes, it is, Your Honor. So uh, dad's very time with Hunter will be, uh, actually Hunter's going to, to school in in Ohio, correct? So Hunter will be with dad during the week and with mom alternating weekends, Friday, 5.30 to Sunday, 5.30, that will continue, is that correct? Yes. Now, Hunter's in virtual school, is that correct? I don't know. Uh, Ms. Jacobson picked Hunter up with the assistance of law enforcement from his school on January 29th, and my client has not been able to speak to Hunter since. Okay, but uh, prior to the prior to that date, was Hunter in virtual school, or was he actually attending in, in school? No, he, he attended, right, Ed? He was in okay. school. Yes, he attended school. Oh, all right, I just because I, I think when I, according to the expert order, I wanted the children to continue the same school. That's why I ordered that the child continue virtual school until we came back here and discussed the matter. Um, Your Honor, he has been uh, in Ms. Ms. School. Jacobson, please, please do not say anything at this point, okay? All right. All right. Uh, so obviously, Ms. Jacobson then will uh, enroll Mackenzie forthwith in Jefferson School, so that uh, for this recommendation. Mr. 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 Kajewski, is this recommendation agreeable with your client this afternoon? Uh, it is not, Your Honor, and we would object to the recommendation, and we would also state that pursuant to MCR 3.207B5, and also just B itself, uh, an objection was not written, filed, and served uh, by the opposing counsel or by opposing party within 14 days. I understand today is essentially 14 days from the date of the entry of the ex parte order, but since that there is no objection, uh, it's not something in terms of an ex parte order that could be set aside. What I would respectfully recommend and more so ask the court to consider, Your Honor, is that there are some very serious allegations that are contained uh, within the ex parte uh, petition. And because of the seriousness and the gravity of what is contained therein, we would be asking that there be another FOC or front of the court uh, referral to investigate parenting time and also possibly custody uh, and also mediation. If the court's not inclined to order those, and I can understand because uh, resources are so far and few in between, I would ask that when it comes to opposing counsel, she can write a motion uh, that would seek to overturn the ex parte order that would be properly precipied, scheduled, and then certainly we can have an evidentiary hearing. And I think it's really important because again, I don't want to get into all of the particular aspects of this case unless the court wants me to at this point, but there's a lot there regarding police involvement, regarding investigations, regarding kids that don't want to be with other parents. I mean, there's a lot of stuff to be sorted out, Your Honor. So that's why I would respectfully object and also what I would recommend or ask that the court consider. Well, first of all, you indicated there's problems with the ex parte petition. Your office prepared and filed the petition, Mr. Kajewski. And all the court did was the ex parte order sent in for hearing today. So you can set all the court rules you want, and there's no need for Mr. Zagorski to have to file an objection. The court, uh, uh, in that order, set up for hearing today. So let's, uh, that, that, that's not an issue. Uh, so what's the problem with the ex parte petition that your office prepared and filed? You're, well, you're losing me, Mr. Kajewski. Well, again, I, I, I understand what the court is saying regarding 3.207B, but still, just for the record, an objection was not filed. So this is a review hearing, I understand. This is not uh, an objection hearing, which is distinctly separate in the court rules. Regarding the hearing to determine whether or not the ex parte order should continue or be modified. That's what it's for. I understand. The court certainly has inherent authority and powers to do as it wishes, but I just wanted to make sure to put that on the record. Um, Moving okay, it's noted. Okay, so what's wrong with the petition? Much, Your Honor. What's uh, wrong with the petition your office filed? Well, regarding the petition that we filed, uh, we have several allegations. And specifically, if you take a look at page, let's see here, uh, four moving forward. So page four moving forward, where we talk about the threshold analysis. 
uh, we're able to go through several of the factors delineated at MCL 722.271C, uh, and we are able to put forward those allegations uh, regarding uh, abuse and, and other dangerous things. Uh, there needs to be, I would say, the bare minimum, Your Honor, an evidentiary hearing on these issues. Uh, th this was not slated today for an evidentiary hearing, uh, and I believe that testimony, in addition to exhibits properly proffered, would be able to certainly assist everyone, including this honorable court, to determine what the next best steps are in relation to the ex parte order. So that's that's what I would go forward, Your Honor. Well, it seems like the recommendation is to some, is what your client is seeking. Um, but your client wants to uh, custody you and wants. A hunter in her possession as well? That's correct, Your Honor. And regarding that, uh, the reason being because when it comes to uh, Hunter, uh, or uh, I suppose if I can just say HJ, because I know we're supposed to be using initials, at least from uh, some other places I've been, when it comes to HJ, he has been doing a lot better in the care, custody, and control of Miss Jacobson really over uh, the past week or so that she has had the child. Uh, and furthermore, when it comes to Hunter, uh, several allegations uh, have been made and they need to be properly investigated. I understand that posting counsel or sister counsel will offer that when it comes to, I forget the name of the exact organization, but the Job and Family Services Organization Ohio, essentially the CPS uh, uh, analogous organization that they have, uh, they said that they were not able to substantiate things through letters I just saw today. However, that does not mean that law enforcement has not concluded an investigation uh, or that they have uh, finished all their steps. So regarding those allegations pertaining to Hunter that were contained within the petition, I, I think it's very, very, very important to know that uh, this really needs to be investigated through at least an evidentiary hearing. But I, I would recommend mediation or I would put forward uh, mediation, perhaps, because getting into this recommendation, it, the devil's in the details for sure. But there are a lot of other health, safety and welfare concerns I would uh, maintain to the court that can be probably successfully negotiated and, and spoken about in mediation. All right. Thank you, Ms. Gorsky. Thank you. Um, well, first of all, I do have 14 days to object to the ex parte order. I haven't been served with the ex parte order, and I'm confident the file doesn't reflect a proof of service. Judge, the truth is that I had been um, in touch with Ms. Kajewski uh, at the same time that she was filing this ex parte petition, unbeknown to me, because I, I didn't know she was filing an ex parte petition. My client had agreed to having Mackenzie go to Jefferson School. Mackenzie's uh, behavior has been atrocious. She has um, been reporting things at the school that are untrue. Um, she has been engaged in physical altercations with my client. My clients had to call the police on her as recommended by the Ohio equivalent of Child Protective Services. Um, these kids are AB students. But mom's on the Chromebook all day with Mackenzie coaching her on how to get to her house and how mom can get custody. And it's worked. So we do want Mackenzie to be with her mom because she's sabotaging my client's household. Um, so she reports these things to school and then Child Protective Services comes out. And I showed Mr. Walker today and Mr. Kajewski a letter from um, June of 2023 where the allegations were unsubstantiated, unsubstantiated, again, initiated by mom. November of 2023, Child Protective Services was in my client's home. We showed him the letter today, unsubstantiated, case closed. As recently as January 19th of last month, there was a letter from the equivalent of Child Protective Services. They were at my client's home, closed the case, unsubstantiated. And I think it was that letter where they instructed my client in the letter that if Mackenzie acts out, he should call the police. He's She's disrupting his household. And, and quite frankly, he believes that she would be better off with her mom at this point. And therefore, we had made that offer. Both of these kids are AB students. There is absolutely no reason that Hunter cannot continue to live with his father. And that is the current custody order. Um, and Hunter is, again, an AB student. And now that my client's household has quieted down because he voluntarily uh, cooperated with Ms. Jacobson and signed the paperwork to get her enrolled in Jefferson, 
even before this order was ever entered, um, should not affect Hunter's ability to be successful with his dad. So um, Mr. Walker and Mr. Kajewski saw those letters. We presented a, a photograph of Mackenzie's bedroom at my client's home. The petition that you were presented with was full of untruths. The allegation that my client forces her to take birth control pills, he doesn't even have that authority. Those pills were prescribed by a physician. My client can't force his daughter to take medication that isn't prescribed. I mean, it's just ridiculous. Ms. Jacobson did this in May of last year, and she's doing it again. And the problem is she's sabotaging her own child, and she's interfering with her child's ability to be successful. So we think that the, the uh, recommendation is well-reasoned. We think it's appropriate. We think it's based on the evidence that there is nothing going on in my client's home. And the only reason that we agreed to say that counseling wouldn't start until April 1st is so that my client's health care, his the health care that he provides through his Medicaid grant, could continue to get Mackenzie a scheduled surgery that she needs. So Mr. Walker's recommendation was spot on, Your Honor. I would ask you to adopt it. If I Perhaps there's a conflict oh, between... Perhaps, Ms. Gorsi, there's a conflict between uh, Mr. Jacobson's current wife and uh, the minor child or children? N no. A, uh, yeah. You know, Mackenzie says things like, I better get what I want or I'm going to kill myself. And she says that to her mother. And then her mother tells her what to do to get out of that household. That's what's happened. And and if there is conflict between my client's current wife and Mackenzie, then that's what the therapist is there for. Quite frankly, my, my client wants that child in therapy. He wants to figure out what's going on with her. Like I said, we have our suspicions. We think it's mom's interference. And if we're wrong, the therapist can tell us so. You'd agree there should be no corporal punishment on uh, either ch child? Absolutely. It's it's alleged that uh, uh, Mackenzie was the subject of uh, corporal punishment by the, the stepmother. No, Your Honor, it, that, that was investigated and found to be untrue by Child Protective Services. Mackenzie creates these stories at school and then the story responds, or excuse me, the school responds and they send child protective services out to my client's house. Three letters since last June stating they were unsubstantiated and, and counsel saw them today as did Mr. Walker. And I'm happy to screen share and show you if you'd like to see them. And your honor, if I may briefly uh, have a verbal reply to the response from opposing counsel uh, regarding a letter uh, that um, was put forward regarding uh, the January 19th date that all originates from a school report uh, from January 11th. This was a report that was made by the school based upon uh, the comments and the information shared by the minor child with school officials and other individuals at the school. So I do take actual big exception to the characterization that Ms. Jacobson is doing anything and everything in order to sabotage relationships. And I think that if, frankly, Your Honor, taking a look at what was put forward by Sister Counsel here, that we have all of these nooks and crannies, twists and turns, that th there's a lot to uncover here. And I don't want to unduly delay things, but I believe that if we're able to do either a mediation and speaking uh, with uh, the referee, they could possibly do it in, in a few weeks, or uh, maybe in tandem, or instead an FOC recommendation regarding custody and parenting time. The last one that was done according to the FOC was December of 2022. But I believe that, you know, given what we have said in our petition, in addition to uh, what uh, Sister Council has stated here on the record today, there's a lot to be uncovered, and I believe that we have to kind of untangle this mess. Thank you. Ms. Gorsi, what about that? What about uh, uh, the children being interviewed by Ms. Scott from the front of the court? Uh, a custody parent time investigation or simply a mediation being scheduled? Sometimes the recommendation causes people to dig in their heels. Um, I, I don't have any objection to these parents having a conversation about anything. And I wish Ms. Jacobson would reach out to my client and ask him for information um, from time to time. She doesn't. She runs to court with ex parte petitions. Um, and, and, we, and we don't we, we agree. McKen There's a problem with Mackenzie. Mackenzie is um, getting into phys physical altercations in my client's home. And, and that's why Child Protective Services has, has instructed him and encouraged him to contact law enforcement. And that's, that, that, that's not good for any child to have your parents call the police. So Mackenzie should be with her mom for now. But there is no reason that Hunter's life should be disrupted. There is absolutely none. All right. Uh, thank you, counsel. At this point in time, the court will adopt some misters. Mr. Walker's recommendation, but I'm going to add to that, Mr. Walker, if you can add that the, uh, the front of the court shall conduct a custody and parenting uh, investigation with uh, both children being interviewed. Yes, Your Honor, I can do that. Uh, if you can do that, please. 
So again, uh, the court uh, is vacating the expert order as to Hunter. Hunter uh, will remain with dad. Uh, uh, Mackenzie well, will reside with mother. Can be enrolled in Jefferson schools after April 1st. Mackenzie shall start therapy. Um, and obviously mother needs to inform father who that therapist is. And they're actually the parties have to agree upon that. So I guess um, um, Mr. Uh, Ms. Jacobson, you identify a counselor in the area and uh, re review that counselor with uh, Mr. Jacobson. You both have to agree upon that counselor. Um, you can, I don't know, go communicate the app close together or go through your attorneys. And hopefully once that counseling gets started as soon as possible, as far as they get as soon as, as, soon as possible, we can re repair the relationship between dad and McKenzie. And if in fact we cannot resolve this matter, uh, Mr. Kajewski, after the front of the court investigation recommendation, then uh, with court we'll consider a, a scheduling of an entry hearing. All right, thank you very much, Your Honor. So um, both parties will receive information from the front of the court to be interviewed regarding the custody and parenting time recommendation and the two children will be interviewed. Okay. Anything further, uh, Ms. Zagorski? No, thank you, Your Honor. Anything further, Mr. Kajewski? Uh, yes, Your Honor, but just for a clarification uh, regarding the orders coming out of this. Uh, taking a look at the custody and parenting time investigation, I believe this, just for my client's gratification knowledge, this will probably happen over the next few weeks, next month. Uh, and then once we get those results, we if we believe that there is a resolution, we would come back, file a motion with the court asking for possibly mediation, or how would you like that to right. sort of flow? I think just re-notice it. I don't even think you have to pay money for a okay. motion. Just re-notice it. Either side can re-notice it to, okay. to review, of the, review the issues. Gotcha. And if I may, uh, certainly this is completely up to sister counsel, but I would recommend at least right now regarding uh, therapists, uh, if maybe perhaps you and I via email, uh, we can speak as opposed to the parties on that. Uh, it's not that I think that the parties are going to go after each other, but I just would like to maintain as much peace and harmony in the world as I can. So i like to maybe uh, talk with you about that instead of the parties immediately talking about counseling. It's a good idea. And then Ms. Gorski is probably familiar with uh, some of the therapists uh, in, the, in the area that I'm does sure. a lot of family yeah. counseling. So I think that's a good idea, Mr. Kajewski. Um, I'm an hour and a half yeah. north, so I wouldn't know all the people yeah. over there. So I understand. Um, and I'm sure Ms. Gorski would, would not be opposed to mediation after you get the, the custody print time recommendation. Reach out to Ms. Gorski. We have three certified capable mediators. and There's no cost to it. And they're doing it by Zoom. So I'm sure Ms. Gorski will be open to talking about these issues. So the court would recommend that after you, before we notice up for hearing, immediately with the front of the court with uh, Ms. Pratt or Mr. Walker. They're, uh, they're very good at what they do. Excellent. Thank you, Ron.